The First Law of Magic, Chapter 4, Part 3 The troll didn't notice and bounced further into the forest. Wait up, Pinky! We have to find my friend Fluttershy! Pinky spun around and giggled. She's right above your head, silly! Twilight looked up to find a very awkward hawk doing its best to hide its bright teal eyes. Oh, um, hello, Twilight. The bird winced and hid behind a wing. What's wrong? You didn't get her trying to find help, did you? No. Did Angel get her? No. What's the matter, Fluttershy? The bird gulped. I just... Uh, I couldn't... You almost died and I couldn't do anything! Twilight smiled softly and extended her hoof up towards the bird. That's not your fault. But no buts. You did your best, and in the end it all worked out. Peeking out from behind its wing, the bird stared down at the unicorn. You mean that? Of course. Now hop on and let's go see the Sakura pony, or being, or whatever. Gingerly, the bird hopped down on Twilight's extended leg and perched on her back, settling into a comfortable spot. Hiya, Fluttershy! Oh, hello, Pinkie Pie. I see you lost righty again. Yep. Pinkie waved her stumpy leg at the pair, much to the dismay of Twilight's stomach. The bird just laughed. I don't suppose the car would have something to help with Twilight's leg, would she? Oh, pish of flutters, we don't need to car for that. Why, I already got a super awesome bird that should fix our new friend up right as rain. New friend? Twilight stopped and blinked. She had made two friends already. Funny, she had spent 16 years in Canelot and had never made a single real friend. Thoughts of Moondancer were pushed from her mind, but she had real friends now. The thought left a bitter taste in the back of her mouth. In the 16 years that she had lived amongst her own kind, she hasn't made a single real friend. But she stumbled blindly through the Everfree for a mere day, and meets two. As Twilight followed Pinky deeper into the forest, she couldn't help but grin. Sure, she still had to avenge her mother and reach her family once more, and despite the frequent danger that seemed to be doggedly following her, things seemed to be looking up. The thought of gaining friends so quickly made the unicorn's paranoia spike. The fact that it felt so natural put her fears to rest for now. The rest of the walk to Zakora's place was a quiet one. Occasionally, Fluttershy would take off and scout around, but the forest seemed clear of anything dangerous, save for a poisonous plant or two. Twilight could tell that the troll wanted to speak. Several times she would turn and open her mouth, only to stop and mutter about it not being safe here. Trusting her new friend more than she cared to admit, Twilight kept her mouth shut and her eyes open. It was as if the woods themselves could feel their vulnerability, and it decided to pity the poor trio. Or perhaps it was simply intimidated by the defeat of one of its more dangerous denizens. Either way, they made it to the shaman's residence without being interrupted. They stopped only once they found a blackberry patch, and even then, they only paused long enough to eat a couple of hoofuls of the juicy fruit before moving on. With blackberry-stained hooves and beak, the trio pushed through the last wall of foliage that divided the forest from the shaman's residence. Twilight's mind had run rampant, imagining the fairy tale like a bow that such a renowned healer must have, and was not let down one iota. In a small clearing, a large squat tree had been hollowed out, and it was clearly being used as the shaman's residence. Masks hung from branches all around the clearing, all facing away from the tree home. Twilight deduced that they must have been used to scare off animal life, as the clearing was strangely quiet and devoid of the usual chatter of the forest. Fluttershy gripped Twilight's back with her talons, eyes darting back and forth. You all right back there? Twilight asked, turning to face the frightened hawk. Yeah, Stephen is just a little scared of the masks. If you close your eyes, I'll tell you when we're inside. Thanks, Twilight. Breathing a sigh of relief, the hawk hid beneath her wing and shut her eyes tightly, calming the body it resided with a quiet hum. Inside the house tree, Twilight could see several candles burning, and beyond that, a larger fire sat beneath a greater pot at the center of the home. Stowing her curiosity for now, Twilight trotted past the masks and the door held open by a smiling troll. We're inside now, Fluttershy. She whispered. The hawk peeked from behind its wing and looked around the hut in wonder. It's so cozy in here. I never saw the inside before. Pinky grinned from ear to ear. Thanks! Part of being her apprentice means keeping everything spick and span. Twilight's mouth hung open and she inspected the home. In one corner, several masks rested against the wall in various states of completion. In another, she could see a small bed fit for some being much smaller than her. Next to it on the floor was a bedroll just barely bigger than Pinkie Pie. Twilight rolled her eyes at the sight. It was almost as pink as her troll friends and had tiny blue and yellow balloons sewn all over it. Beyond that, every nook and cranny of the hut seemed filled with ingredients both mundane and extraordinary. On one corner, Twilight could see Simple Sage and Black Rush next to what looked like dragon scale and iron bark. Perhaps most impressive of all was the large pot that sat in the center of the room, where a small fire burned beneath. Though it didn't seem to give off any smoke, she could feel heat emanating from it. Twilight leaned closer, inspecting the base of the flame and finding a small pile of gems pushed close against the pot. Are those fire rubies? Yup, ours! Pinky responded cheerfully, grabbing a hoofful of the same gems from a nearby ledge and showing them to Twilight. Grinning, Twilight reached out for them, only to stop. May I? Sure! 
They're pretty neat. Plus they make for a good snack too. Nice and spicy. The troll huffed overall, but one which she popped into her mouth and began crunching away. Fluttershy winced at the sound of the gem being crushed in the troll's teeth, while Twilight just gawked. After every few bites, a small gout of flame would escape the troll's lips, which she didn't even seem to notice. Wow. Remembering that she had a few in her hoof, Twilight inspected them as the troll finished her snack. The rubies were about the size of a bit and perfectly round. Within them glowed a faint light like a flicker of a candle. Twilight was pretty sure that she had enough curiosities to study for at least a decade, and she had only been in two buildings and met a couple of beings. What wonders will the rest of the town yield? Handing the rubies back to Pinkie Pie, the troll swallowed the last of her snack. Her eyes screwed up, and after a second of confusion on her guest's part, Pinkie belched loudly, a small torrent of flame rushing out of her lips and nearly cinching Twilight before she ducked out of the way. Wow. Twilight and Fluttershy said in unison, I thought trolls were hurt by fire. Fluttershy hopped closer, eyeing up the much larger being with concern. We are, but Fire Ruby's fire is different. It doesn't burn like Fire Fire does, you know? Both other beings shook their head, making Pinky groan. <sighs> fire Ruby's burn like peppers, and Fire Fire burns like fire. Get it? Twilight scratched her chin. Basically, you're saying that magical fire doesn't harm you like natural fire would. That's one way of putting it, but I like my explanation better, though. The troll's eyes shut open suddenly as she slapped a hoof to her head. Oh, I almost forgot. Spinning around, the troll grabbed a small vial from one of the numerous shelves hidden all over the tree home. Here, this'll fix your leg right up. Twilight reached out to it only to stop and eye the troll warily. How much does it cost? For new friends? Diddly diddly neighbor, you know. Really? I may not know much about potions, but aren't the ingredients for this type of potion rare? Eh, a little bit. But if it helps a friend and helps bring a smile to your face, then it's worth every gem. The troll fixed her with a huge toothy grin, brimming with confidence, showing off sparkly crushed bits of gem stuck in her gums. Twilight couldn't help but smile and take the vial, the troll's happiness infectious. So what do I do? Trinkets? Or... The unicorn eyed the strangely thick brew in the vial cautiously, the brown liquid hardly moving as she shook the glass container. Yep, just pop it back all in one go and try not to throw it back up. Trust me on this one, it's twice as nasty coming back up as it is going down. Twilight nodded and braced for the worst. Tossing aside the stopper, she took a whiff of the potion. Her assumption was off, slightly. It smelled unpleasant, but it also didn't smell as bad as she anticipated. It reminded her of the black tar smell that she remembered from her childhood when they paved the street outside of her window. Before she could think about it, she tossed back the violin once prematurely. However, after a few seconds of nothing happening, she opened her eyes to see the stuff had just barely shifted enough to start flowing down the vial. Does this stuff react badly to magic? Twilight asked, eyeing the troll. Oh, what? No. The troll scratched her head absently. Er, I don't think so anyway. Gripping the substance in her telekinetic field, the mare pulled it out of the vial and tossed it down her throat. The thick mucus-like substance slowed into her gullet at a painfully slow pace. She had just barely managed to avoid her tongue with all but a few drops. The taste was surprisingly close to what she assumed the black tar stuff the workers had used would taste like. Blech. Twilight swallowed over and over until she was sure that she had sucked down every last drop. A thought occurred to her suddenly as she felt the strange concoction slide down her throat. Why had she trusted this being that she had met mere minutes ago? She was sure that if she was in Canterlot, she would have never trusted another pony with such a disturbing liquid, but here she was, tossing it back without much of a second thought. Shaking her head, the mare grinned. Thanks, Pinky. How long does it take to work? Oh, th that. Pinky rubbed the back of her neck awkwardly. I'm not the best at potion making, so it should take about a week. The troll winced. Oh, well, that's not bad. Twilight winced and looked over her shoulder at the hawk. Hug her, silly! The hawk whispered. She seems self-conscious. Um, okay. Twilight awkwardly stepped over to the troll, and after the hawk had hopped off of her back, the mare stood on her back hooves and awkwardly hugged the large being. Slowly, the troll hugged back, her own awkwardness vanishing along with her sense of failure. Squeezing the thinner being tightly, the troll giggled. I like your hugs. They make me all tingly. Twilight smiled. That didn't sound like a compliment to her, but she chose to take it that way. Disengaging from the stronger being, Twilight stepped back. Really, Pinky, thank you, but shouldn't you have used that potion? I mean, your leg is a little worse than mine. Pinky waved around her leg stump that had thankfully stopped bleeding a while ago. Nah, that's a busted leg potion, not a leg maker potion. Grabbing a hoof full of sandstone from a nearby shelf, the troll tossed it back and began to chew loudly. Sides, I just gotta keep up my nutrition and my leg will be back in no time. Twilight nodded. She had so many questions about trolls and potions and everything that she had seen, but she stood them away for now. If she had a week of being unable to walk properly, then maybe she could find a library around her and fulfill her seemingly boundless curiosity. Though there was something more pressing that she needed to do, and that was the plan. First things first, she would need gems in order to get home, though she knew not how she would earn them. 
She would need supplies, a guide, a weapon of some kind, as well as a disguise and fake identification to get back into the city of her birth. Even then, she didn't know how to get any of those things. She'd cross that bridge when she got there. Hey, Pinky, Fluttershy, do you know where I can make some bits- er, uh, gems? I usually just find my gems lying around. Plenty of beings drop them, and my animal friends pick them up and bring them to me. Sometimes beings just give them to me, sorry. I can't help more. That's fine. Thanks anyway, Fluttershy. I used to work at my family's rock farm, but that's all the way near the bottom of Cliffsdale. After I left home, I was lucky enough to find out about Sakura, and after plenty of convincing, she let me stay here with her, and let me learn all the super neat stuff that she knows. I never really needed to make any gems, but Sakura gives me some occasionally for helping her with the tough stuff. Oh, and I make all the party supplies myself. The troll grabbed a hoe full of homemade confetti and threw it into the air. Twilight smirked at the display. It looked like dry grass that had been dyed different colors. She had to admit, that was a pretty ingenious improvisation. Darn, you cross not leaving me with a leg to stand on. <laughs> Good one, Twilight. The troll laughed deeply, her rumbling laughter so present that Twilight could feel it. She blinked. Oh yeah, I suppose that was pretty clever. I guess you got a leg up on me there. The troll's laughter doubled, and she rolled on the floor clutching her sides. Twilight was a little more reserved, merely snickering at her own terrible puns. Fluttershy just sighed and covered her face with a wing. <sighs> not another one of you. The hawk said with a sigh. Twilight giggled at the hawk's annoyance. Oh, can't take the punishment, Fluttershy. Fluttershy groaned louder, while Pinkie Pie laughed harder, only stopping long enough to add her own pun. Oh, <laughs> you know what they say, Fluttershy? Birds of a feather flock together! While the two other mares laughed, Fluttershy scowled as much as a beaked creature could scowl. Getting back on topic, I'm pretty sure that there's a farm at the edge of town that was looking for help the last time I passed through. No offense though, Twilight, but you don't look like that you can do a lot of farm work. Twilight waved a dismissive hoof. No, no, that's fine. I've never been athletic. Ooh, that's good thinking, Fluttershy. I'm sure Applejack will help Twilight out. Plus, it's almost her big brother's birthday! The troll gasped, and suddenly reached over and grabbed Twilight's cheeks. Do you know what this means? No, what? Double party! Double party? Twilight shared a confused glance and shrugged with Fluttershy. Well, yeah! We gotta throw you a welcome to Ponyville party! Plus, we can have it at the farm and make it a double party! The fun has been doubled! Huzzah! The pink mare took on a more regal posture with the last two sentences, as if quoting some being Twilight had never heard of before. Anyway, thanks again, Pinkie Pie. I must have been really lucky that you had made a leg-fixing potion. Oh, no luck about it. My pinky sense told me someone was going to come along and need a leg-fixer potion. The troll tapped the side of her head with a hoof and grinned. Pinky sense? Yeah! It was a tail shake followed by a scratchy nose followed by my legs feeling all noodly, and after that I knew someone was going to need a leg-fixer potion. The pink being scratched her head awkwardly. Or was it warning me that I was going to get my leg numbed on? She shrugged. Oh well. Twilight merely shrugged as well, realizing it was just Pinky being Pinky. Even being around the troll for mere minutes seemed to make the unicorn realize that trying to think too hard about the strange pink creature would only make her head hurt, which was a far cry from what usually happened in other realities that involved their meeting. She wonders if this is because she went through so much craziness in her life so quickly that made her more accepting of the odd pink being. Well, it was nice meeting you, Pinkie Pie. I look forward to the party. Twilight said with a poorly mustard smile. Yep, or, you know. Oh, before I forget, strawberry, vanilla, or chocolate? The troll pulled a pencil and notepad from her mane and eagerly waited Twilight's response. Strawberry... N no, wait, chocolate. N no, wait. Twilight frowned deep in thought. Why not both? Fluttershy added. Oh, that's perfect. Uh, can you do both, Pinky? Twilight asked. Of course! I'm so excited, I can't wait until your party with all your friends. It's gonna be great. Now out, you two. Get going. Auntie Pinky has plans to make and cakes to bake. I'm a year older than you. Fluttershy mumbled. Toodaloo! With a swift push, the pair was out of the door and onto the curb. The door closed firmly behind them. Twilight blinked repeatedly. What just happened? You got invited to a Pinky Pie party. Oh. Uh, does she do this for every being? Fluttershy simply nodded. I've never been to a party for me before. Twilight stared down at the ground between her hooves, lost in thought. Not even one? Twilight shook her head. I've only been to one other party, and that was a disaster. Do you want to talk about it? The hawk asked sweetly, hopping closer to the mare. Not really. Sorry, it still kind of hurts. Twilight winced. That's okay. We don't have to talk about it unless you want to. No, why don't we go get some rest? I'm sure you're tired after all the excitement that we had today. Yeah. The pair picked themselves off their front step and started back towards the town with Fluttershy leading the way. As they walked and flew, Twilight's mind drifted back to thoughts of the pink troll. 
Sure, she was strange and seemed to defy the laws of linear casualty, but considering everything else that's happened recently, this just seems par for the course. Twilight smiled. She wasn't sure why, but becoming friends with her felt right, as if it was meant to be. Maybe it was how nice and funny the being was, or maybe it was something else, or... No, that, that'd be silly. She dismissed the thought. It probably wasn't some sort of cosmic destiny, but the pink troll's sense of humor surely had a fair share in it. Twilight hadn't laughed or smiled as much as she had while in the pink troll's presence. Not since her brother's last birthday. No, she, she wasn't going to think about that. Not now, not while she was starting to make progress back home. Instead, she chose to think about the jokes that they had shared, much to Fluttershy's dismay. When she had woken up earlier today, lost and alone and so far from home, she had believed that she would never laugh again, never feel kindness again, nor be able to locate a soul that would stand with her. But here she was. With hope blossoming in her chest, Twilight lifted her head high and dared to dream of a better tomorrow. Of a whole world where her life was not one horrible misstep after another, blundering further and further towards her own demise. The mare smiled and picked up her pace, quickly catching up to Fluttershy and smiling widely at the hawk, who in turn couldn't help but smile back. Though that came out more in the being's eyes than smiling with a beak that was a rather difficult task. Making their way back to town, the pair took a more wary pace, frequently stopping while Fluttershy scouted ahead while Twilight laid low, ensuring this walk through the forest would not end at the jaws of some beast. All the while, they talked idly, Twilight's curiosity burning bright as she finally had time to ask some of the many questions that she had thought of since her arrival at Ponyville. Fluttershy did her best to answer, but she had never really been interested in the how and why of what happened, save for when the animals were concerned. The evening star pulsed joyfully, its light matching the identical flickers from a nearby star. This one was different from the others that had shown so far, its light was pink where the others stayed in the same spot unmoving in the sky. This one seemed unbound by the laws of gravity, and hopped happily across the night sky. After a time, the stars dimmed and reassembled into their places, the light disappearing once more, fading into the background of many other brighter stars. Two main friends gained, and three more to go. Unless you count Starlet Glimmer, wherever she is in here. Though that's assuming that she's even friendly to begin with. We might find out eventually. Anyway, let's get on to our alchemical donators. Top donators Peter Coldhard, J10 Man, Darkseid, Gauntlet, and only one thing. TacoCat598, Zara630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Austin Rowland, CrazyKiller557, Stu Hex, Will, Omicron Lyrae, Dalspell, Delta Omega, Jack Hadge, RuneSlap9852, Madman Stan, Lucy Perkett, Hansa Norman, Stephen Bingham, LineGuy12, Sorcerer Constantine, Hud Zaza, Lifegiver, and many more spectacular people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.